This is the Iowa Weather Report for Tuesday, September 15th, 2015, and now our first look at the Zero Z GFS model run at 1 p.m. this afternoon. A bit of a trough over the eastern Pacific and the northwest and west coast, a bit of a ridge pretty much over from about the Rockies eastward, with it centered pretty much just off the Carolina coast. Southwesterly flow is going to be continuing, and that's going to bring southerly winds at the surface. Quite gusty as well, 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting maybe up to 30. It'll bring warm temperatures back in the state once again with highs well into the 80s, maybe approaching 90 in our far western counties both today and tomorrow on Wednesday. Any shower activity is going to be very isolated, typically late afternoon and evening. We saw that yesterday in our far northern counties. Can't rule it out today or tomorrow, but the better chances will come late into Thursday, Thursday night, with this frontal system that will slowly move through the state, showers and thunderstorms will be possible. Reading still mainly in the 80s ahead of the front. The uh, front slows down and another wave comes in from the southwest because the flow will still be from southwest to northeast. So more activity could come in Friday into Friday night and early on Saturday. And that could bring decent amounts of rain to the state. It's a little too early to determine, but you'll see that coming up when we look at the five-day precipitation map. That system moves out for the weekend, though, so by Saturday afternoon at least, we'll see drier conditions around, and the rest of the weekend looks abs absolutely gorgeous. Readings will be a touch cooler, maybe in the 70s to near 80 degrees. The humidities will be a bit lower, so it'll be a pleasant weekend all around for anything that you want to do outside. Going into next week, though, as we move into next Monday, you can see the southwesterly winds beginning to take hold out in the Plain States, and that means that's going to be coming in our direction once again. So we could be heading into next week with another spell of warm weather again for a little bit of time. And you can see pretty much next week here at the 500 millibar chart again, the flow is coming pretty much zonal west to east, but it's fairly far to the north for this time of the year. It's going to keep the temperatures warm. We have a system moving through the middle part of the country, another one just off the northwest coast. The one over the middle part of the country looks to be bringing a cold front through late Tuesday into Tuesday night, maybe early next Wednesday, with a threat of some showers and storms. We'll keep watching to see if the timing may change in the coming days. Going into the extended period on the 26th of September, Pretty much still the same, a ridge over the south and east, main storm track pretty much over us, and that's going to mean that that weather pattern is going to get a little more active again. We have one storm system over eastern Canada, another one coming into our area that could bring maybe a threat of some showers and storms, of course timing, strength, still up in the air, so we'll keep watching to see if we see any trends in the coming days. As we go to the end of the month, September 30th, we have a vigorous system over the northern plains, a much more vigorous system coming down across western Canada, and that one has a lot of cold weather with it, and it shows the height levels down fairly low for September and even for even the middle of winter. That might not be around in the coming days, but this system over the middle part of the country would bring a couple of showers and storms around with highs still remaining slightly above seasonal levels as we move to the end of the month. Satellite image from last evening, somewhat quiet from about the Rockies eastward, a couple clouds along the Gulf Coast, a couple of isolated storms in the Midwest, big system out west producing quite a bit of action out there over the last couple of days or so. The watch warning map from last evening at this point was fairly quiet, although there was some really bad flash flooding in Utah, there were several fatalities there, red flag warnings continue over Colorado and Kansas, and a couple wind advisories there as well. QPF chart over the next five days. This goes through Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, showing rainfall amounts around here, according to this, maybe approaching 1 or 2 inches, with the lightest over the northwest and the heaviest over the southeastern counties. Mm -hmm.